Surface treatment is a generic term for physical or chemical job procedures in which a damaged or replaced body panel is renovated in order for successful implementation of surface coating. In this film, we will explain the basic process of putty applying, which includes four sub-processes, mixing the putty, scraping the putty, drying the putty, and grinding the putty. We now describe the steps in turn. First, grind the zone sprayed with epoxy primer using scouring pad to ensure the adhesion of the scrape coated putty. When grinding is over, clean the panel using a dust blowing gun and evaluate the zone scraped putty. In such a way, confirm the damaged zone of the panel and the amount of putty applied. mixing the putty base and curing agent thoroughly before use. After stirring, remove the residual putty base from the putty barrel and its cap using solvent. Take a certain amount of putty base and curing agent and place them on the agitation plate. Never directly squeeze the curing agent onto the putty base before you agitate the putty. Typically, blend the putty and curing agent at a weight ratio of 100 to 2 to 3. Mix the putty and curing agent using a scraper thoroughly. Practice the procedure repeatedly to ensure that the process can be completed within 60 seconds. It is necessary to quickly mix them and apply the putty onto the surface of the workpiece. As chemical reaction has occurred after putty mixing is started, the mixture will become unstable once it cures. Whether or not the mixture is homogeneous can be judged by the color of the mixture. Inhomogeneous mixing may result in the problems like poor putty curing and poor adhesion. First, take a small amount of putty using a scraper. Apply a thin layer to the surface of the damaged zone and press forcibly the putty into small dents resulted from welding or trimming while applying so as to ensure good adhesion of the putty. Filling up scraping. Put the putty on the scraper and move the scraper. Edge of the scrape coated area must be thinly coated when putty is scrape coated. To apply putty to the damaged zone, apply a pressure on the scraper. Keep the scraper slightly vertical when you scrape coat putty to the dented zone, and gradually tilt the scraper and reduce the force when the center position is reached. Once the center is passed, gradually increase the vertality of the scraper and increase the force applied onto the scraper. Scrape coat the concave zone and scrape the scraper to ensure that no putty residue remains on the surface of the workpiece. Each stroke of putty needs to overlap one third of the previous layer during putty scraping. Care must be taken during scraping. It is recommended that each layer shall be thin scraped thin so as to minimize the occurrence of blisters. In case the damage zone is big, Fill up the defects with big dents before the layers are thickened progressively. Once surface of the first layer is dried, repeat scrape coating for the second time and repeat it till sufficient filling up is achieved. Edge position of the putty coating zone shall not be excessively thickened. To apply putty on a large area, conduct scrape coat using a wider scraper to achieve more ideal surface smoothness. To grind the surface, the putty must be dried. To accelerate the curing process, forced drying at about 50 degrees Celsius may be performed 
and heating shall be stopped once the temperature of the putty exceeds 50 degrees Celsius. According to experience, once the surface is hot enough to touch, the temperature is too high. The positions with thin layer of putty applied take a relatively long time to get dry. Therefore, you may check the putty in such positions for complete dryness. Check the putty curing as follows. Test the zones where the putty is coated using a fingernail or use sandpaper to polish the thinner parts. The putty that is not carefully cured will adhere to the paper in such a way in a subsequent polishing process. Never start grinding before the putty achieves dryness and curing. During the automotive coating construction, grinding operation is generally performed mechanically or manually. Putty grinding shall be performed as per dry grinding process. Manual grinding is applicable to the corners that are not suitable for grinding heads and the positions that require post sanding fine grinding and fine trimming. Mechanical grinding can reduce labor intensity, improve work efficiency, and save grinding materials. However, both grinding and mechanical grinding are usually adopted to grind corners, edges, and bends so as to ensure the grinding effect. First, Apply a layer of grinding indicator in the putty applying zone, such that technician can use the grinding indicators to visually check the surface for the problems like irregularities, pinholes, and abrasive paper traces. Sanding indicator shall be applied every time sanding paper is changed during subsequent grinding. Before grinding, it is advisable to consider the size of putty scrape coating zone. The grinding method and rationally select the type of sanding paper and the grinding head. Perform rough grinding using rail type grinder fitted with sandpaper number 80. Pick up the grinder from below during grinding and the body posture shall allow moving the grinder horizontally or vertically with ease. Hold the grinder such that it touches gently the putty surface and allow the grinder to touch the putty before you start it up. If you start the grinder up before it touches the putty surface, it tends to scratch the latter. Move the grinder vertically, horizontally, and slantily during grinding to ensure that grinding is conducted within the range of the putty. If the sandpaper comes into contact with the coating, it will leave a deep trace of sanding paper, which cannot be removed. Grind the putty applying surface to avoid such a case. Check the surface by hand, touch during grinding, and remove the large dents or bumps. To grind the high spots, perform local grinding on it, and then grind the entire surface to avoid surface unevenness. Rail grinder plus P120 sanding paper. Grind the surface using a rail type grinder fitted with number 120 sanding paper and move the grinder crosswise in a star shaped pattern. Care should be taken to grind the putty surface only and avoid sanding paper traces on the old coating. Check whether the feathering edge or steel plate surface can be seen through the putty. If yes, Stop grinding to avoid overgrinding the surface. Then, use an abrasive block fitted with number 180 sanding paper to polish the surface manually. Grind the entire surface of putty. Once the formed surface accounts for 80% of the undamaged surface, check the visibility of the feathering edge and continue grinding until the entire feathered edge is visible through the putty. Only one layer of putty shall be left over at the finishing feathering edge. To form the same shape as the original undamaged surface, just remove the grinding marks. Surface trimming. Surface trimming is intended to remove sanding traces left over during previous grinding. 
and to ensure the natural transition from putty surface and coating such that the surface is identical with the undamaged one. Use number 240 sanding paper to trim the surface and remove all traces of grinding to ensure the natural transition of the putty to the coating. Eliminate all sanding paper traces between the coating and the putty. Grind the surface to 20 millimeters of the surface molding part and carefully check the surface shape and the transmission from putty to the coating using the palm. Upon completion of the surface trimming, a thin layer of atomic ash shall be left over. For application on the ground surface of Midway Primer, use number 320 sanding paper to remove the sanding paper traces left over during previous grinding. The grinding range is about 10 centimeters at edge of the putty. If the grinding area has a body shape or a panel edge, you may stop grinding to reduce the grinding zone. Eliminate all sanding paper traces left over by intermediate steps and ensure that the surface gets dull. If it still has luster, it means that the grinding is not enough. Otherwise, the subsequent coating may peel off. In process of putty grinding, stop grinding once the points above the undamaged part are exposed. Knock down the high points such that they are lower than the undamaged surface. Then apply a layer of putty across the whole surface. If it is found at the time of grinding that there are some parts inadequately filled with putty, it will not be able to form the correct shape. Thus, stop grinding the surface and clean the steel panel. Apply putty in the concave zone and then apply a layer of putty on the whole surface. If it is found that there are pinholes that cannot be filled up in subsequent procedures after the grinding of putty, the pinholes shall be filled up and a thin layer of putty shall be applied to the whole surface. Notice that the formed shape of the surface may be changed, too, if much putty is applied when the pinholes are filled up. Post grinding check. After grinding, remove all sanding paper traces left over during surface trimming, so as to ensure the surface is flat and free of sag, bulge, and pinholes. Clean the surface and go to the next step. Finally, through the introduction and study of the above contents, we hope that you can master the standard construction process and operation skills of the putty shaping and can apply and improve them in practical work.